a friendly greetings from my bathroom floor. Hi, I'm 1-800-DEAD-GIRL. Welcome to my hair tutorial. We're getting chaotic in here. Today we're doing a ballin' on a budget video, and I just realized how much hair dye is all over my face. We're gonna get into how to fix that and other things here in this episode. Stay tuned. Hello, people of the internet. I'm going to show you guys an in-depth tutorial on how I do my hair, and I'm trying a new lightening product. So we don't know how this is gonna go. We're both gonna learn here a little today, um, but this is ballin' on a budget. This is going to possibly be a series where I do like drugstore items over um, prestige beauty items. Um, this is my cabinet. It doesn't open all the way to get out of the scene, but you're in my mirror right now. So today what we're using, I have two mixing bowls. Um, I only have one actual hair dye mixing bowl, which is this. And then I just washed this really well. It's a food safe ceramic Shrek bowl I made in high school. So we're gonna be putting the bleach in this one, we're gonna be putting the black dye in the pink bowl, and then we're gonna use an actual hair dye brush as well as this silicone thing because I saw somebody do a hair tutorial where they used that. And I like the idea of trying it, so we're gonna do that. Otherwise, we're gonna use this, just a normal brush, um, and I will be rinsing it between the two colors. So what I've already done is I've separated the blonde from the black best I can, pinned it up so that I don't accidentally distribute the black side onto this side. And the products we're going to be using, Revlon, the three, four dollar one, um, blonde, and black side. So and these come with... These come with a conditioner I'm probably not going to use after we do these. Um, I've never tried this one. This is my go-to when I plan on keeping my hair black for a long time. Sorry, Brad Mondo, if you watch this. I'm a beauty school dropout. What more could you expect from me? So that's the hair dyes we're using. Um, I got a whole jar of these curl clips from Marshalls or JCPenney for like $10. I'm going to be using these to separate my hair. I have two pairs of gloves so I don't mess up either side and then after we're done washing it all out I'm only going to shampoo my hair really well with um this Nexus color safe shampoo and then after I get out I'm going to be using this deep hair conditioner leave-in conditioner and a little bit of this to restore my hair because I dye my hair all the time. Now this is just a root touch-up so I'm only going to be going slightly above where the root is on both sides just to make sure it blends a little nicer. Without further ado, let's get started. I'm wearing a shirt from a job I don't work at anymore so I don't care if I mess it up. And yeah, oh, and when we're done, after everything's washed out, this stuff is the best to keep on hand for removing hair dye stains from your skin. God send you just put a little on a makeup round, cotton round thing, get it off of your skin. Easy peasy like that. Sorry, I got a phone call from Scam Likely. Anyway, um, let's talk about my rinsing um, routine because since obviously this side is going to be bleached, this side is going to be the opposite. Um, I don't want any of this to bleed through onto this side. So what I do, I'm going to do the black side first, let it completely develop, wash it out. Then I'm going to dry my hair, come back, and do the blonde side separate. So I'm not going to film myself in the shower. That's why I showed you guys what shampoo I'm using. To get started, we're going to do the black first. And the reason I'm doing the black hair side first is because hair bleach makes this side more porous and so if there is any bleed through from this side it will more than likely stain the blonde side and turn it like gray or purple depending on what the base for this pigment is so I don't do that um I also always read the instructions when you dye hair um I know 20-25 minutes tops for this brand because I've used the black hair dye a million zillion times so we had step one. 
We're gonna add step two to the bowl because I like to aerate my dye and mixing is better than shaking, especially if you're using box dye product. The only thing scary about this stuff is how quickly it develops. So like once you start to feel heat on your scalp, especially when you're only touching up your roots, you need to keep an eye on it and be ready to rinse your hair because you don't want to damage it or stain it or anything like that. And like box dye can be perfectly safe. Obviously it's, it's not the best compared to certain salon brands. However, we're balling on a budget. Like I said, it cost me $6 for both of these hair dyes and the other supplies I already had. I mean, you can just, if you have a designated bowl, like I would recommend glass or metal. Um, just make sure it's not interactive with like ammonia or any of the common ingredients in hair dye, but I would highly recommend that and investing in a good hair dye brush. Aside from that, we are ready to go in. My mirror is right here, so I might be slightly like to the side. But to start, I like to always do like the crown separation here up top where the actual split dye is, just so that part is covered. And it's about to drip on my face, that's fine. Let's see, I'm getting as close as I can to where the blonde split is, but I'm not touching the blonde side at all. I'm dabbing, I'm pushing it slightly back towards the scalp, and then I'm pulling up and towards the roots on the black side. I'm gonna remove that blob real quick. And then I like to do it in layers a little different than some professionals would probably advise me to. I've been doing my hair since I was 11 and I've only fucked it up twice. So take that info for what you will. I did drop out of beauty school. Um, I wanted to go to just be a colorist and they said, yeah, you can do that. I started the program and in my first week there, they tried to throw me in hair cutting classes and you can't fix a messed up haircut. You can fix a messed up dye job because you, you have toner, you have all sorts of stuff. You can't just fix a messed up haircut that easy, especially without extensions and stuff like that. And that's expensive and like you can lose your license if you screw up a haircut. And I don't trust like that. But you know, hair dye, it's a lot easier and it's a lot more fixable, even if it's a permanent dye, unless it's like henna, which don't do henna if you ever plan on changing your hair color anytime soon until it's grown out because henna will ruin your hair if you put bleach or any ammonia based product in it after using henna hair dye because it like stains stains the follicle it's like basically tattoo ink kind of and yeah i just wouldn't recommend using that for hair if you dye your hair as frequently as i do but if you like stay like brown or black hair and you maintain it and you plan to keep, you know, that same color, go for it. Henna could be a lot easier for long lasting. Um, I'm getting the underside and the back of my neck now. And I don't really care if I stain my neck that much because I don't really film a lot of things from my neck. So, all right. So now that I've got a good base around my roots where the separation is, I'm just physically rubbing in some black dye just along this, but around the back so I can feel where the pins are to stop myself from putting any black dye on the blonde side. We're going to mix the bleach in this terrifying cup. So.
I'm kind of scared to use the blonde. I've never used bleach from this brand. Um, I usually do L'Oreal Feria color, uh, Colorista, whatever. Or I think that's who it is. I don't know. I use the just plain old bleach. 25 minutes. Okay, cool. So it's about the same time. All right. Boop, boop. I'm going to mix these. And I'm going to use a mix between gloves and that silicone brush because we're going to see if it applies better on this side. I figured why not. At least if I screw up this, it's my own fault. It's my own head of hair. Got to deal with that myself. Okay. So. We're going to stir that until it becomes a good thicker consistency this is a much waterier texture than the black hair dye that i'm used to but it's the same packaging of developer and color so that i'm confused by it's a little chunkier there was no bleach crystal so i'm not sure how this is supposed to light and it's very bubbly now that I'm about to start doing this side, we are going to throw some clips up on the black hair side. Same premise, we're going to avoid putting dye on the wrong side, and it will be a bit easier this time since now half of my hair is already saturated. Um, but it's supposed to be bleach, so I don't know. Here's the skincare applicating tool I've decided to test on this side and I'm literally just saturating any dark part of my root. We're doing the same process as we did on the black hair side just applying bleach. There's a few strands of black hair mixed in here that's fine. It's more than likely not going to lift that much in color anyways given the fact that this doesn't even have bleach crystals in it. In here rubbing it into my scalp a bit making sure I'm getting like the roots saturated and I can always tell when my roots are well and saturated because the heat from my scalp is gonna make the bleach get a little frothy and that's how you know it's working and that's also when to start keeping an eye on it if it's tingling it shouldn't be tingling um, like if it's burning I should say because tingling is normal Bubbling or burning is when you need to rinse and wash because you don't want a chemical burn on your scalp. One time I got a chemical burn on my butt because I was getting ready for the winter formal and I put nair on my butt because I didn't know anything about anything. And I was like, well, if it's for shaving your legs, people shave like their butt. So I put nair on my butt and I had like second degree chemical burns. I had blisters and it was really horrible and painful as you might imagine. We'll just throw a bunch of toner in here later, but I'm just fully saturating it like a good hair mask just to make sure I'm not missing any spots. And I also like to pinch it kind of up and into the whole scalp to make sure. And like, I feel a dry patch back here. So we're gonna grab some more, throw that in here and squish it in and same with right here, I think I missed a spot. So we're gonna grab that. All right. Now we are gonna wait the recommended amount of time before I rinse and I will be back with my results. So here is it rinsed. I haven't added my leave-in conditioner yet. Um, slightly purple tints from the tiny bits of black strands that were stuck in here. My roots are yellower than I would like them to be, but I'm gonna wait for my hair to dry to decide if I wanna tone it or not. And as you can see, the black side is perfectly intact. Um, and my eyebrows are perfectly good. I got the black dye off my face. Now I'm gonna go in with that bio silk and deep conditioner and let it air dry. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and follow me on TikTok and Twitter and all the other fun stuff if you want to stay in touch. Thanks so much.